Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Tuesday, May 2nd, and our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book, Trusting God Day by Day. I don't know about y'all, but I've been really enjoying the devotions, you know, from the beginning of the year, but the ones most recently, I think, have been really, really hitting me where it hurts, you know, helping me to put that mirror in front of my face. And I, let me just say right now, the best favor you can do for yourself, and I believe I've said this before, is to be brutally honest with yourself. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what he needs to reveal to you in order for you to have a breakthrough. Most of the time when we're stuck and we don't have breakthrough and we know we need something to change, it's because there are things about us we don't want to admit to. Okay? All right. Just saying. Let the Holy Spirit move. Move in your heart and stir and search your heart. Pray it every morning. Search my heart, O God. Find the things that aren't of you. Purge them from me and create in me a clean heart. Literally every morning. Okay, so our devotion today is entitled, A Well-Balanced Mind Stays Positive. Thank you, Lord. Our scripture comes from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, of cowardice, of craven or cringing and fawning fear. This is out of the Amplified Bible. So God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. I like how the Amplified kind of breaks that down a little bit more. Okay. Power, love, and a sound mind is what usual traditional um, translations read. This one gives us, he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. That's what God gives us. Fear is a lie from the devil and it's a tool in his arsenal that he successfully uses to steal from us. Think about it. Fear always drives us in the opposite direction of where the Spirit of God wants us to go. I haven't even gotten into this yet, but this is what God has revealed to me about fear, because fear has been a huge generational stronghold in my family. Fear failure. Uh, there's natural fears, being up high and falling, and that's that comes from your self-life preservation and things. You know, when there's danger and your life is threatened, yes, you're going to feel those things. But the fear the enemy uses to cripple you is when there's imagined things that are not there. I think someone broke it down one time. Fear is false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Those are things we have to keep in mind and ask for the Lord's strength. He gives us a sound mind, a well-balanced, not cowardice, not any of those things, because the word talks about cowards having their place in the pit of hell. Okay, cowardice is not from the Lord. All right. Okay, all right, let's get into this because I'm going to go off on my soapbox. All right, you can't control what happens to you, but you can determine to go through it with the right attitude. In fact, you can choose beforehand that you will keep a positive attitude in the midst of every negative situation that presents itself to you. Before it even happens, you can determine you're going to have the right mindset. And that is a prayer that you can pray every single day. Even when you feel there's the beginnings of a trial happening. You can say, Lord, I need you to walk with me through this. I need to have your mind, your mind set. I need to see with the eyes you would show me to see and help me to walk through this with the right attitude and heart. Okay. 
Yeah, I lost my place. Okay, well, uh, uh. okay. In fact, you can choose beforehand that you will. Like, I'll just reread. You can choose beforehand that you will keep a positive attitude in the midst of every negative situation that presents itself to you. If you make this decision and meditate on it during a good time in your life, then when difficulty arises, you will already be prepared to maintain a good attitude. Throughout history, we have examples of people who have maintained good attitudes in the face of difficult times and thereby turned their problems into opportunities. Specifically, I think of various individuals who were imprisoned and composed some of the most influential writing the world has ever known, such as Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr., Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, and Sir Walter Raleigh's The History of the World. No doubt these people could have had terrible attitudes as they faced terrible trouble but they made a decision and maintained the best of attitudes throughout the worst of times and made contributions that are still read and heard today. I don't think they were simply born positive people. I think they had to make a definitive choice. And their choice not only benefited themselves, but in the process, blessed the world. One of the worst mistakes we can make in our thinking is to believe we are just not like those positive people and we can't help it. That's a lie from the pit. It's a lie. If you think you can't do anything about your thinking and attitude, then you're defeated before you've even begun to try. Discipline yourself to stand strong with your positive attitude in every circumstance. And see, the discipline, there's the fruit of the spirit that we all, self-control, you know, love, joy, peace, you know, long-suffering, all those things. The godly qualities of raising up a child in the way that they should go, and in the way that they should go, is with bearing the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, trusting God. Look at how the generations have dwindled since God was kicked out of the school system. Prayer acknowledgments of God in the public format. You know, they're trying to take down all these things. We're trying to erase God from every because there's this lie of the separation of church and state, which is a miss, a twisting of the word. That's the Leviathan spirit of the letter that Jefferson wrote. Jefferson was a godly man. Thomas Jefferson was a godly man. He didn't believe they had a right to tell you how to worship. Free to worship, not freedom from worship. There's a difference, and that was what he was talking about, the separation of church and state. He was saying the state had no right to tell people how they could worship, not that they could not worship or that God was not supposed to be a part of any decision-making in our public. So that's off. I don't know who needed to hear that, I just trust that God was leading that because that just didn't seem to fit. But, oh, children nowadays don't, they haven't been taught the ability to be self-disciplined, to maintain positive attitudes. It comes into the rearing. If we are following God's word, we are going to have the ability to take our stand in the midst of difficulties. Because his word promises, we believe his word. We don't believe his word anymore for some reason. The body of Christ, not just the world, the body of Christ doesn't believe God's word. They don't believe that he'll provide, so they don't tithe because they need every penny. They don't believe that he will heal. Oh, healing miracles were from the past, so they stay sick. And I'm not judging anybody who has anything chronic going on because I've had family members with chronic illness. I don't know why things happen, but we just aren't believing God at all. I trust him with the release and the timing of each of those blessings. But it's like, Lord, help your people, help your bride to embrace your word in its fullness. Then we will be able 
as we believe and trust his word, he doesn't give us fear. He gives us power, love, and a sound mind, well-balanced mind, calm, power, discipline, self-control. These are the things the Spirit gives us instead of fear. In America, our society is overrun with fear and deception, and it's hard for us to muck our way through. God's Word is the anchor. That's what we have to hold on to. Stop listening to what the world is saying to you, to what society, to what the culture is saying to you. And listen to God's word and believe it. Fear will tell you no. Fear will tell you it's impossible. Fear will tell you every lie to keep you in fear. You have to choose not to believe fear anymore, not to listen to the fear anymore, but to be to receive the power, the love, the well-balanced, self-disciplined mind that chooses to think positive, that chooses to have the right attitude with the Holy Spirit's help, you will begin to see unbelievable provision and breakthrough in your life when you do, because you're disarming one of the enemy's tools. You're taking it out of his arsenal of weapons he would use against you. And don't forget that armor. Put that armor on too. Okay. Our trust in him today is, what was your attitude like the last time you faced a really difficult situation? Did your choices bless you and others? Did you put your trust in God? Looking back now, how could you have handled it differently? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this word and this reminder to me to not give in to fear, that we can trust you with every circumstance and situation. Help us to discipline ourselves for, with positive attitudes, trusting that your word is true because it's impossible for you to lie. Hebrews 6.18 Every word you say comes true because you are not a liar. It's impossible for you. Help us to recognize and to overcome the fears that have held us back. We thank you, Lord, for giving us an awareness. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Because your word says we are more than overcomers. In Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. And thank you for stopping by my channel. I hope you decide to like and subscribe. Click that notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. And if you feel there are family or friends who would be blessed by these devotions, please feel free to share. I am completely blown away by the number of subscribers. I, I've told you before, I never dreamed I'd have 100, let alone what I have now. And it is mind boggling to me, but to God be all the glory because putting my devotions up was his idea. <laughs> I just said yes. And so thank you again for spending a little time. I hope you're being blessed by this word. I hope it's making a difference in your life the way it is in mine. God bless you and bye until next time.